Radha is making a beautiful garland for Krishna. Vrinda is helping. Take this garland and give it to Krishna. What a beautiful garland. Or how can I give this garland to Krishna or how or how? <gasps> Suva, I could ask him. Suva, will you take this garland and give it to Krishna? Why yes, of course. Vrinda is thinking that Subal is a Priya Namasaka. He is very dear to Krishna. If Subal takes and gives it to Krishna, then Krishna will become pleased. This is not a good time. It is noon time. It is quite impossible to bring Radha here. Oh, my friends, give up this hope. It is quite impossible. But my dear friend, unless you can bring Radha to me, then I will drown myself in the Yamuna River. Without Radha, I cannot survive. Oh, my friend cannot survive. He will drown in the Yamuna. All right, then somehow I must bring Radha here to give pleasure to my friend Krishna. By hook or by crook, I must. Suckers know what Krishna is thinking and how they can give him pleasure. Such are the activities of the Priyanama Suckers. They are very dear to Krishna. Tubal comes to their house. Why have you come here? Why have you come here at noon time? Oh, here's a naughty boy. Mother, one of my calves is missing. I have searched everywhere for him, but could not find him. He might be inside. Mother, go inside and check. Oh, I have just taken my lunch. You go inside and see. Subal was expecting Jatila to say that. All of Krishna's leelas take place by the wonderful arrangement of Yoga Maya. Remembering Yoga Maya, Subal prayed and then entered into the inner apartment where Radharani was. He told everything to Radha. Krishna is sitting there on the bank of Radha Kund, intensely thinking of you. You have to go there, otherwise he will drown in the Yamuna. This is an awkward time and my mother-in-law is sitting at the doorstep. Oh, how can I go? Oh, how can I go? <laughs> All right, Radha, you take my garments. Pick up the calf and hold it to your breast like this. But what is impossible? If we are very anxious to do something to give pleasure to Krishna, what is impossible? Krishna can do and undo things. Nothing is impossible for him. He gives pure intelligence. The Gita describes Taisham Satata Yuktanam, Bajitam Priti Purvakam, Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam, Yena Mamu Payanti Te. To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So the intelligence came to Subal what should be done. Subal has the same appearance as Radharani. The keen eyes of Radha's mother-in-law Jatila and sister-in-law Kutila are there on Radharani. <laughs> now that Radharani was dressed in Subal's clothes, she looks just like Subal. Mama. She then makes her way to Radha Kund, dressed as Subal. Mother, I've got my car. 
Oh, you got your calf? Oh, well, very good. Now go get out. Mom, mom. Uh, Dory Law, Dory Law, aren't you going to offer Pooja to Sri Day, Sri Kund? Yes, Mother, I'm going, I'm going. Radha and Krishna meet at Radha Kund. They look at each other and start to laugh at the joke they played on mother-in-law Jatila. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balava Giri Just hold on, and then I brought you to the children they produced good sweet pastimes of Krishna meeting and Radha Kund. My blessings in future they should understand what is love especially the lovers copies in future. Now they cannot, but future they may. My blessings. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, so to speak about the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Give him. Uh, 
Om Magyan Timaran Jasya Gananjana Salakaya Jaksu Amilita Mina Tesme Shukradev Namoha As we know, Gurudev has been speaking somewhat about the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He started his class two days ago with a verse from the Adi Leela in Chaitanya Charamrita. We know the essence of this verse is that Lord Chaitanya has appeared in this world to give what no incarnation has ever given before, sublime knowledge of the taste of his service and of his love. We are so very fortunate because this verse in Adi Leela also instructs us that this gift has been not given for such a long, long time, apparently since the day of Brahma, so some four billion years ago. We also know that this gift is so rare and so precious that even Brahma, Narad and Sukadev want it. Uddhav also wants it. On Krishna's instruction, he travelled to Vrindavan and met the Vrajavasis. What he saw there blew his mind he could not comprehend. He became so happy because he was so fortunate to witness the great love that the Vrajavasis have. And he realised that he could not console them because the tears that they were shedding for Krishna in separation were actually the greatest fortune. So how could he tell them to stop crying because they, what they were doing was perfect? So he was happy but he was also overwhelmed. If we see a very, very big, great mountain, we may say, oh, what a beautiful mountain, it is so high. But at the thought of ascending this mountain, we become very overwhelmed. This was how Uddhav was feeling. But we are so fortunate because Mahaprabhu has appeared and he has given us the means by which to ascend this great mountain of Unach Valaras, this very, very rare and precious gift. But Gurudev has instructed us many times that we can, and also Sankaracharya has instructed us when he said, Bhaje Govinda, Bhaje Govinda, Bhaje Govinda Mudhamate. Do not worship Govinda, worship Govinda, worship Govinda. Our intellectual jugglery will not take us here. Only by chanting and remembering and performing devotional activities under the guidance of Srila Gurudev and by following in the footsteps of those who are carrying out the mission of Mahaprabhu may we even get close. The first line of this verse is Anampitam Chirim Charat. Anampitam, what does this mean? It means to give. Chirat, what does it mean? Not for a long time. We also see in Adi Leela the verse Hari Purata Sundara. Hari, as you all know, has many meanings. But here we can understand that it means powerful lion. So similarly, Rupa Goswami prays to Lord Chaitanya. Oh Hari, you are the powerful lion. And just as when a lion roars, all the mad elephants free. When you roar, so the, our Nathas and our fences are also fleeing. So Srila Gurudev has told us that very carefully, we have Lord Chaitanya in our heart like a lion, but he is in a cage. Yet if we listen to his instructions and we take this very careful, and we, we listen very carefully to this gift that Lord Chaitanya has come to give, the Lord Chaitanya will very powerfully roar like a lion in our heart and our life will become perfect. So we should, we should take this on board and follow the instructions and very powerfully and proudly pursue this mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We are so fortunate. There are actually as many atoms, there are many jivas as there are atoms. And within however many of those jivas, only so are so, are so fortunate as to come across Srila Gurudev or to even come across, even to hear the name Mahaprabhu, you're also fortunate. So you should take this on board and pursue his goal as much as possible. Um, I hope this pleases you. Thank you. I want that ladies like, lady devotees like Chandramukhi, her sister, and also what name? Damodar Priya. Other ladies would be ready to preach our mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As in past, Gangamata Thakurani, Janava Thakurani, Hemlata, and so many have done this. So, my heartly blessings to you. Very properly, you should preach a brief verse. <laughs> Go, Praman. I know that there are so many qualified ladies also. So many qualified male devotees also. They should come forward and preach the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As in the time of Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. Also, oh, 
I saw a banner, Sri Giriraj Gaudiya Math. I want that Tapan Mishra, Premananda Prabhu, Jagadish Pandit, new Brahmacharis, they should come after this festival, they should be in Giriraj Gaudiya Math there. And uh, Gaur Praman. <laughs> and I have requested Mahaprabhu and all others, they should invite devotees, bring preachers from India also, from here also. There are so many qualified, Dinbandhu Prabhu and others. Brajaballa Prabhu should be invited there and they should preach the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I request all that you should be in one opinion and make that center oh, very well that our preacher from India here then they will come and stay there until a big place is not found. Hmm. This center, Giraj Gaudiyamat, is very good. Basement, about more than 100 devotees can sit and hear Harikatha. Also, so many sannyasi brahmachari can be there. And I think all are helping, Mahaprabhu, and all are helping, and you should all help. Gaur Preman. Agyanat Mirandhasya Gyananjan Salakaya Chakshurun Militang Jena Tasmai Si Guravena Bancha Kalpataru Vesya Kripasindhu Vaivacha Patitanam Pavanibhya Vaishnavibhya Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishna Yu Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurat Vijaya Tavai Vasmi Tavai Vasmi Najivam Tvayavina Iti Bhikhnaya Radhe Tangnaema Macharnam Tika My heart feeling, obeisance as the Lord of Street of my Diksha Guru, Om Vishnu Parsi Sumat Bhakti Pragyan Kesav Goswami. And same in the Lord of Street of my Siksha Guru, Om Vishnu Parsi Sumat Bhakti Vedan Swami Maharaj. We are explaining Raya Ramadan Sambhad. We discussed two or three days, three days or two days, three days. But even we cannot explain first day slope. And in what two days rest, two days, today and what can we explain more? Anyhow, we are explaining something. We are touching this subject. If I will tell in one day all I can do, like Hanuman, Ek Lamp Hadila, he jumped and brought Sita in Ajodhya. Iti Ramayana. Understand? This is in brief. <laughs> so, we are going to tell the briefs only. <clears throat> but I think that if I will come in future, I must come. Then <clears throat> I will gradually develop all these things. So we have discussed that Mahaprabhu told Raramanan 
that what is sadhya and what is sadhana yesterday briefly we told you especially arun maharaj told something about sadhan and sadhya and sadhan so i told you that every fair first sadhi is what eh is certain except first what is the life goal of life first thing and then how it can be received in what process what we are going to achieve it is gopi prem no and what is the process to follow gopis bhakti is sadha and bhakti is sadha bo chaitanya mahaprabhu asked and he replied swadharma acharane ki vishnu bhakti hai then <coughs> what swadharma acharane really swadharma acharan is sadhya in real sense swa means huh. our uh, constitutional duty dharma ishwa dharm but here what ramanand has told the shlok for reference it shows that he had told about varnashram dharma not fast for dharma so he told the shlok वर्णाशम आचारता पुरुषेन पर पुमान आराध्य नानक पंथाय देर इज नो अदर वे टू विष्णु वट इज दर्पट यू शुड एंड वाई महाप्रभु टोल्ड इट बाह्य बहुत ओम ज्ञान थिमिरांद से ज्ञानंजन सदाकया चक्षुरुन मिलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम सो इन द डिस्कशन वेयर श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु हैज इंक्वायर्ड फ्रॉम रामानंद रॉय व्हाट इज द अल्टीमेट sadhya the ultimate goal of life so in this sequence of answers which we are now going to be hearing which sri ramananda roy has given in response to this question of chaitanya mahaprabhu this is the first suggestion that ramananda roy has given varnashrama charavata purushena parapuman vishnur aradhyate panta nanya tattosha karanam here he is speaking about varn ashram varn ashram dharma what is varn ashram dharma in the bhagavad gita lord shri krishna says chatur varnyam maya shrishtam guna karma vibhagasha he says here that i am the creator in human society of the system called chatur varnyam or varnashram dharma this means that by nature within this material world within this whole universe god has created a system for the human society to make step by step progress in their ultimate attainment which is to 
have their swadharma, as Srila Gurudev has told. That means their eternal occupational duty in relationship to the Absolute Truth, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, but in the beginning stages the human, of human society, they are not all qualified to accept the highest process <clears throat> through which this ultimately must be obtained. So in order to be merciful to the living entities within this world, Krishna, Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of God who has created this universe, he has established a system called Varnashram in which human society is divided into four different uh, categories. Uh, and actually there are four social orders and four spiritual orders. So these are divided according to guna and karma. That means in, in this world everyone takes birth uh, in a particular family, <coughs> in a particular society, and in this way, their birth is determined by their previous activities and previous lives, which is called their karma. So that particular birth that they have is already set. What qualities they have within that life are earned by their previous karma. Some persons are highly intelligent. So therefore, they can perform duties which other persons who don't have the same level of intelligence can perform. So therefore Krishna describes that just like within our body, our physical body, we have different parts of our body, like our head, our arms, our uh, belly, and our legs. So these different parts of our body perform different functions for the service of the whole body. But the head ultimately is directing all the activities. Without the head, none of the other parts of the body can function. So in the same way, the Supreme Lord has created the system of Varnashram in which human society has the Brahmin class, the intellectual class, which is compared to the head. Then there is the Kshatriya class, the administrative class, which is compared to the arms. Then there is the Vaishya class, which is the class of men who can perform, do business and agriculture and such and maintain uh, the whole social body. And finally there are the workers or laborer class called Shudras and they are like the legs of the social body. So if Krishna describes that if a man properly follows this system of Varnashram Dharma, or in other words, this uh, verse which was quoted by Ramananda Roy, it says, Varnashram Atara Vata Purushena Para Puman Vishnur Aradhyate Panta. By following this system and worshipping the Supreme Lord by executing one's occupational duties, then Nanya Tattva Shakaranam. The Supreme Lord becomes satisfied by this. So this is a proper step in the right direction. Aside from these social orders, there are also four spiritual orders of life, which the human beings are meant to progress a stage by stage through in their life. The first stage is called brahmacharya. That means the student life. Then the second stage is called grihastha. That means married life, family life, in which they take responsibility. They uh, raise children and family, and they work hard to maintain the social body like this. Grihastha. Then there is vanaprastha life. After, after completing uh, the duties of the family life, then in order for a human being to attain spiritual perfection, he will have to give up this attachment to the family life within this world, and he will now have to start preparing himself for the final stage, which is renunciation, sannyas. So in order to uh, bridge that gap between the household life and the renounced life, oh, then he will have to become a retired, vanaprastha life, and prepare himself. Then finally, when he is qualified and he is detached from all material affairs within this world, he can take the sannyas order of life. So this is the four spiritual orders, varna and ashrama. So these are created by the Supreme Lord, and here Ramananda Roy is saying that this is for the benefit of human society. If someone uh, executes this, the Supreme Lord will be pleased, and aside from this, there is no other way to please the Supreme Lord. But when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this suggestion by Ramananda Roy, his response to that was very interesting. He says, Eho Bahya, Age Koho Ar. He told him, what you are telling is actually external. Bahya means external. Age Koho Ar. 
Please speak further. Please give another suggestion beyond what you're telling me now. So why did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu say that this is uh, bahya, external? Because Varnashram Dharma, although it is leading to the, the eternal Swa Dharma or the Sanatan Dharma, the eternal constitutional position of the soul, but in and of itself, it is actually on the material plane and it pertains only to the physical body and the social interactions within society. Uh, ultimately, the aim of Varnashram Dharma is to satisfy the Supreme Lord. But in and of itself, it cannot really give the highest perfection unless it comes to the stage of absolute surrender and worship of the Supreme Lord through what is called pure Shuddha Bhakti. So, as we heard yesterday, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to hear about the ultimate goal of life, sadhya, and he also wanted to hear what is the sadhana, the process by which this ultimate goal of life can be attained. So, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed that this is external, then Sri Ramananda Roy considered, and now he suggested, as Mahaprabhu wanted him to suggest, the next step, which would be a higher level, more uh, near to the actual activities of the true transcendental soul, the Atma. So this is the process. Without coming to the level of the soul and without connecting the soul in worship of the Supreme Soul, it is not possible for him to attain this sadhya, the ultimate goal of life. So we will hear now of all the other stages which he suggested. Something more? Something more? Umagana Timarandhasa Ganandana Salakaya Jakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurabi Nama. So we have heard from Srila Gurudev and also from Pujapat Bhaktanta Padman Ab Maharaj about Varnasham Dharma. So first of all, the goal of life is transcendental and eternal. And is attained by Sanatan Dharma, the eternal religion of the soul. So Varnasham Dharma is not Sanatan Dharma because one's Varna and one's Ashram is never Sanatan, never eternal. You will not be in the Brahmachari Ashram forever, may become Grihastha, but this will also not be forever, may be Sanyasi. So ashram can change and varna will also change. One life, sutra, katriya, brahmin. According to the modes of material nature, these things can change. So the varna ashram dharma can never be called sanatan dharma. It is related to the gross body and the subtle mind and the modes of material nature. So the real goal of life of sanatan dharma is prem, transcendental love for the supreme lord. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will always reject any suggestion given by Ramananda Rai unless that suggestion is what is known as Sarup Anubandi. Sarup Anubandi means he wants to hear something which is related to the constitutional form of the soul, the soul Swarup. So in this verse it is stated, Purushena Parapuman Vishnu Arajate Pantananya Tattoshakaranam. That there is, there is no other way to satisfy Vishnu but the execution of these prescribed duties in life. But the question comes who is this Vishnu? Vishnu himself has manifested this material world. The Mahavishnu, Gabadakashai Vishnu, and the Paramatma, Kirdakashai Vishnu. So Vishnu has manifested this world, and along with this world, the duties which are related to this world. But the question comes, does the Atma have any eternal relationship with Vishnu? No. The Atma has no eternal relationship with uh, the manifestation of Bhagavan, who is... Uh, performing the activity of creation, Brahma, uh, uh, maintaining the universe. Brahma is creating, Vishnu is maintaining, Lord Shiva is destroying the universes. So it is true that one may satisfy Vishnu, the creator, by performing the re activities related to the creation. But the Atma is related 
जीवेर स्वरूप हो कृष्णेर नित्य दास कृष्णेर तथास्त शक्ति बेदा बेद प्रकाश द आत्मा हैज इटर्नल रिलेशन विथ कृष्ण एंड देर फोर बाय द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ दीज ड्यूटीज वन कैन राइज अप फ्रॉम द थमगुण राजगुण सत्वगुण एंड वन कैन बी एलिवेटेड टू द हेवनली प्लैनेट्स बट एक्चुअली इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू Uh, become completely liberated and enter Golok Vrindavan at all impossible by the performance of Varnashram Dharma. But there are some good sides. What is that? In Varnashram Dharma, you will have to respect your seniors. If any guest comes, you have to serve them. So a chance is there that when a sadhu is moving around, that or you will receive him in your home and serve that guest. and in this way a chance will come to go beyond the uh, absorption in material duties and learn something about the eternal occupation of the soul which is related to shri krishna therefore chaitanya mahaprabhu he said eho bhaiya or oh, this is something external please tell me something deeper something which is swarup anubandhi related to atma very good फिजिकल the false false of uh, the subtle body made up of false ego and so on now generally it can be said that ashram relates to the physical body in that a person traditionally in the varnashram system a person will progress through different stages according to that person's age during the younger age during youth a person is in the brahmachari life then grihastha at a particular age or a particular time um a person enters the renounced order and the varna system varna prastha and sanyas however the system of varna relates to a person's subtle body in other words a person does not is not a kshatriya a brahmin a kshatriya a vaishya or a shudra by birth but according to that person's nature that's the prime qualification but these things are temporary a person's nature changes and a person does not remain in the same body for very long therefore shri chaitanya mahaprabhu has declared na ham vipro na cha narapatir न पी वैश्य न शूद्रो न हम वर्णी न च गृहपति न वनस्तु यतिर्वा किंतु प्रोजन्य किल परमानंद पूर्ण अमृत अवधेर गोपी भर्तु परकमलयोर दास दास अनुदास हम आई एम नॉट अ ब्राह्मण आई एम नॉट अ वैश्य आई एम नॉट अ क्षत्रिय आई एम नॉट अ शूद्र नाइदर एम आई अ गृह अ ब्रह्मचारी अ गृहस्थ अ वर्णप्रस्थ or a sanyasi know that i consider myself only to be an eternal servant of the servant of the servant of shri krishna who is the life and soul of the gopis and who exists in full splendor this is our true relation this is our true identity and for this reason shri chaitanya mahaprabhu asked shri roy ramananda to speak further श्री नमः In the Raya Ramananda Sanbad, which Slok has quoted here about 
সাধারণ আচরণে বিষ্ণু ভক্তি হয় দ্য শ্লোক কোটেড ফ্রম বিষ্ণু পুরাণ ডায়লগ বিটুইন টেক টেক প্লেস টুক প্লেস বিটুইন উর্ব মুনি অ্যান্ড সগর মহারাজ সগর মহারাজ আস দিস কোশ্চেন টু উর্ব মুনি হোয়েন ই ভিজিট হিস রয়্যাল প্যালেস দ্যান ই কোটেড দিস ভার্স বর্ণাশ্রম আচরবতা পুরুষেন পরপুমান নৈবার বিষ্ণুরাধ্যতে পন্থা নান্নত্ব সকারণম মহাপ্রু টোল ইট ইয়ো বাজ্যেট ইস এক্সটার্নাল গো ফর দ্য ডিপা শ্রীপদ অরণ্য মহারাজ অ্যান্ড সুন্দর গোপাল প্রভু এক্সপ্লেন ভেরি নাইসলি বাট ইফ শ্রী রামানন্দ রায় সাপোজ টু মেনশন আদার ওয়ে লাইক শ্রী গুরুদেব টোল হোয়াট ইজ স্বধর্ম স মিনস ওন হোয়াট ইজ আওয়ার ওন ধর্ম টু সার্ভ ডিভাইন কাপল টু ফর হোয়াট পারপাস মহাপ্রু কেম রাগ মার্গ ভক্তি লোকে করিতে প্রচারণ দ্যাট ইজ আওয়ার স্বধর্ম ইফ শ্রী রামানন্দ রয় ইজ সাপোজ টু মেনশন দিস থিং অ্যান্ড গিভ এক্সাম্পল দ্যাট বিষ্ণু ভক্তি হয় বিষ্ণু মিনস হুইজ বিষ্ণু গরোধক সাই বিষ্ণু ক্ষীরোদ সাই বিষ্ণু অর লর্ড নৃসিংহ বিষ্ণু অর লর্ড রাম বিষ্ণু হি ইফ ই ক্লিয়ার দ্যাট বিকৃতং ব্রজবধূ ইদঞ্চ বিষ্ণু ইফ ই টোল অ্যাবাউট দ্যাট বিষ্ণু মে বি মা প্রু টোল ইয়েস এ উত্তম আগে ক হর সো দিস ইজ দ্য জিস্ট হরে কৃষ্ণ বঞ্চা কল্পত রূপস্থ কৃপা সিন্ধু ভয় ওম জ্ঞানম তিমিরঞ্জন শ্লাঘায় চক্ষুরম মিলিত শ্রী গুরুভে নম ইফ আই কেন টেক দি স্লাইট বিট অফ রেমনেস অফ দ্য প্রিভিয়স স্পিকার্স আই ট্রাই টু সে ফি ওয়ার্ডস শিল গুর ডেভ এক্সপ্লেন দিস সুগেস্টন এন্ড রিজেকশন ইন হিজ ক্লাস ইন পুরি দিস সমর ইন হিন্দি হি কোটেড ওয়াট শ্রীপাদ মাধব মহারাজ সেট Vikriti Tam Brajabhadu Bir Idam Tri Vishnu. That real Vishnu Bhakti means Krishna Bhakti. And the conception of, of Aishwarya reduces the ability to serve. Mother Yasoda and all the associates in Vrindavan never had that conception of Aishwarya. And therefore they were able to serve totally favorably. Real service has two parts, Skurdev explained there in Puri. One is the relationship with Krishna, the Sambandha, and two is the Seva Vasana, the desire to serve Krishna favorably. Rather, therefore, what Ramananda Rai said about Swadharma, one's own Dharma, would be true. But because he said Vishnu Bhakti means serving by prescribed duties, therefore Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rejected it. In the conception of Varnashram, this is not pure bhakti, but arup siddha bhakti. And every time Ramananda Rai gave a suggestion that was actually arup siddha bhakti, that is, it's an activity that's not bhakti, it's vaguely related to bhakti, but the idea, the word bhakti is artificially superimposed over it, therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would reject that suggestion in a rope siddha bhakti. For example, in Varnashram Dharma, the consideration is that by serving my father or by serving my husband, this is Vishnu bhakti or this brings Vishnu bhakti. This is Paramesh for a seva. But this is superimposed. Gurudev said, I have to ask myself, is my husband or is my father God? And is that to please God? No, it's based on my material conception of life. He explained that there's two impediments to bhakti. Even if one has a bona fide spiritual master, still there are two impediments. If one cultivates, I am this body, and um, I am this body and material desires, absorption in material desires. So Varnashram Dharma, is the service to material relationships 
thinking that that's service to God in hopes that the Lord will be pleased with me so that I can be happy in this world. There are so many qualities of each Varna and each Ashram which is cultivated in Varna Ashram. For a king, for example, he should be very truthful, honest, and he should be charitable. There's one beautiful story in this connection that Srila Gurudev told about the same suggestion and rejection when Srila Gurudev was in Hawaii in the year 2000. There was a great king named Haris Chandra who was fully following the Varnashram system, trying to, thinking that this would please God. He was the most charitable person and the most truthful person and he would never accept any word that was untruth. So Visramitra Muni was thinking, this attachment to Varnashram will impede my desire for him. I desire that Lord Ramchandra appear in his dynasty in the future. So he decided to make a plan. When Harish Chandra was sleeping at night, Visramitra Muni came to him and as in a dream, he said to him, now you give everything to the brahmanas, that's also part of Varnashram, that the Kshatriyas give to the brahmanas. So I want you to give me your whole kingdom. Harish Chandra agreed. And then Visramitra Muni disappeared. The next morning, when Harish Chandra woke up, he forgot everything that happened the night before, but Visramitra Muni came to him in the morning and said, do you remember a dream you had? No, I don't remember. Yes, in your dream, you gave me your entire kingdom. Now that in, in your waking state, you should finally fulfill this vow. Well, if I promised, I'm true to my word and I'm charitable to brahmanas. So then he said, okay, now give me everything that you have. Okay, it's yours. Then Visamitra Muni said, but whenever you give to a brahmana, you always have to give a little donation in money also. So give me 10,000 gold coins. Harish Chandra said, Treasurer, bring me 10,000 gold coins immediately. Visamitra Muni said, what? He's my treasurer now. You can't give, him, give me anything. It belongs to me. So then he was thinking, well, how can I get the money from my kingdom? This is not your kingdom anymore. You can't sell anything. You can't give me anything. So then he was in dilemma. So Visramitra Muni said, well, there's one place that's not my kingdom, and that is the kingdom of Kasi, because Kasi rests on the trident of Lord Shiva, so it's transcendental to my kingdom. You can go there with your wife and son, and you can try and sell yourself, and then you, don't forget to pay me, though. So he had no longer any chariots, no longer any horses, nothing. But still he was thinking, I am King Chandra, because part of an ashram is to be attached to truthfulness if you're a Chetriya. So he was thinking, I am still, I'm thinking, even though he lost everything, I'm still the king. So attached to the bodily conception, this is my wife and son. Then when they got to Kazi, he was saying, who will purchase me, who will purchase me? So one owner of a graveyard purchased him for 5,000 gold coins, and a very mean Brahmana purchased his wife for the other 5,000. So he now he has a new identity. His new identity in Varnashram is, I am the keeper of this crematorium. Now, it so happened that Visvamitra Muni, we know, has mystic powers because he can come at night and pretend to be in a dream of uh, Haris Chandra. So by his arrangement, there was a, a great storm, black night, and in that black night, a snake bit Rohitasva, Ro, uh, King Haris Chandra's son, and killed him. So the mean Brahmana told the wife, I'm not going to give you anything to help you. I've already bought you for 5,000 gold coins, and that was enough. So his wife took his son in this cold, dreadful, stormy night, looking for how to cremate my son. Naturally, she came to the bank of the Ganges and met her husband. So now he's thinking, now I have a new identity in Varnashram Dharma. So he's thinking, he didn't see his wife because it's so dark out. So he said, so I'll cremate your son, no problem, but you have to pay. She said, I have nothing, I have absolutely nothing. Still, somehow or other, you have to pay. All of a sudden, there was a lightning bolt in the sky, and the whole sky became light. And then he could see, oh my God, this is my wife. And this is my son, Rohi Tosva. Oh no, and he's a dilemma. Am I the king? Am I the husband? Am I the crematorium guard? 
and he was in complete dilemma. He began crying because, well, maybe she is my wife, even though she's, he sold her already. But then again, I have to be my duty of, I'm now I'm the crematorium guard. So he said, but still you have to pay. So she said, well, I only have this one cloth that I'm wrapping around my son. I'll give you half. He said, okay, give me half. And just as she was doing that, Visvamitra, Lord Brahma, and so many demigods came. And Visvamitra Muni said, Roi Tassu will be the king. Roi Tassu will be the king. And he looked at the sun, and the king, sun came back to life. And then Visvamitra Muni uh, told Harish Chandra, I did this all to you. I took everything away. Now I'm giving everything back. Your son will be the king. You should go and meditate. Go to heaven, become purified, and then engage in sadhana bhakti, and then you can attain Vishnu bhakti. You're not this body. You're not any of your identifications. You're not Harish Chandra. This is not your wife, and this is not your son. You are part and parcel of Krishna. You should purify yourself in heaven because you have to still taste some of the fruits of your pious activities because you're not yet purified. Then you can come back to earth, engage in sadhan bhakti, shravanam kirtanam vishnu, ado shradha tato sadhu sangha. Then you can become purified by real Vishnu bhakti and then Ramchandra will appear in your dynasty and he did. Thank you. Where this shloka has been quoted from Vishnu Puran. Just after this shloka, one shloka also has been told. Matre hmm? Rishi question and Parasar is answering. Bhuman Manorathan Swargan Swargi Bandham Tathaspadam Prapnokti Aradite Vishnu Nirvanam Api Cha Uttama. Meaning, earth, wealth, swarga, uttam nirvana gati. Nirvana, you know? Sayuja Mukti. Can be achieved by this. Banashamdhar. Not anything else. Never. So, Clearly it shows that by, by Barnasam Dharma we cannot attain what? Mm. Swarupanubandhi and Swarup Siddha Bhakti. It is clear. But why Raya Ramananda? Quoted this is slow. Aranya Maharaj answered, there is some chance that if great sages like Vishwamitra, associate of Ram, and others oh, can come and associate, and by that then his heart will be purified and then he will proceed to Sarupanubandi Bhakti. Otherwise not. And that is why she quoted my story which I told in Puri. Hawaii or Puri, I told. So, you should see that what Harish Chandra was doing, speaking truth. But what became? Luckily, Vishwamitra. He saw that in his dynasty, Ramchandra, Lord, will come. And he's thinking, that this gross body, material body, I am. And what is I am telling by this mouth? Oh, it should be true. But we cannot do like that. We cannot speak true by this body. So he wanted to reform him and to give true knowledge of Sanatan Dharma that it turns dental, this thing. That is why in dream he took his kingdom and then he went to Kashi himself and in the form of any boys, Brahmin, he took uh, Rohitaswan's wife as a servant, maid servant and boy servant and in a dome 
Uh, oh. He took Harishantra and engaged in that duty. And what became, you know? He became poisonous snake and he was so powerful, he can do anything. <laughs> and then at last he came <coughs> personally with a Jam Dharmaraj and others. And then he returned back his whole wealth, kingdom and everything. And told him that now you should realize who are you. Hmm? You are not this body. You are eternal servant of Krishna. You should realize. And then you should chant and remember. You should give up this kingdom and go to forest and there you should chant Ram and Krishna. Not only Harishandra. There are so many great rishis, Mahasis. They have sacrificed their life for public. Shivi, Dadhichi. Very big, big stories. I don't want to quote all these stories, long stories. But you should know, Deta, demigods came to Dadichi that we want your born because Bhittasur should be killed and it will be killed only by your born. And then he began to laugh. Oh, you are very selfish and cruel. But yet I will give. And then he called a cow and took yogurt and sugar in his body everywhere and they, yeah. in lifetime, they took all his blood and everything and only bone was there. And by that, oh, that Pajra was done and also remaining a Dhanush which was uh, broken by Ramchandra at Janak, Janakpuri. So there are so many things. Eh? And one Parshuram. So there are so many histories, stories in Puran about this. But why Ramananda quoted? Only that Arunya Maharaj told, there is some chance that any pure devotee can go there because they uh, want to honor and serve Grihas. This is the duty that any atithi will come, they will have to serve. Guest will come. Atithi especially. Atithi means guest. They will come and they will honor. So as a guest, Naradrishi can go anywhere. Bedur can go anywhere. Like uh, in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu Avadhu, he can go everywhere. Like Sukhde Goswami being naked for nothing. He has to take from anyone because he is himself naked. No uh, need of clothes or wearing or and he can Without taking anything, he can remain for long, long years. But he goes. Sadhur Sabhauke, Taite Pamar, Nijakar Janahitabe, Jadanda. This is the thing. Now, Mahaprabhu rejected it. And then what he told? Raya Kahe Krishna, Karma Arpan, Sarva Sadhya Sar. What is Krishna Karma Arpan? 